Okay, so this is uh, video one of how to make Brick Breaker in JavaScript. And uh, if you are joining me from the last video, uh, this is the code that we had before. And uh, you know, what we could do is we could just delete all this stuff and start with our fresh template. Uh, but that's not what I wanna do, okay? So I'm gonna copy everything and I'm gonna create a new file. And I'm gonna get rid of all the stuff I want uh, that I don't want uh, and, and I'm left with this blank template that we've always said we're gonna start with okay um, and so what I want to do is I want to save this as a JavaScript file and so I'm gonna do save as like we've done before I'm gonna call this brick breaker um, actually I'm gonna choose dot uh, hypertext markup language save as type and then I'm going to say dot HTML. Now this file extension is uh, is important uh, because even though we're saving as this type, um, if you don't include the extension up here, uh, then uh, the Chrome doesn't read it as um, an HTML file. Okay, so I'm going to save that, and I get the nice uh, formatting for uh, for the language. And uh, what we want to do is we want uh, in this video what we want to do is we want to get the canvas which we have and we want to create this ball okay and so with this ball what are we going to do well this ball is going to have to move right it's going to move all over the screen and so what we want to do is uh, we want to create uh, some um, variables all right now there are different ways of creating variables in JavaScript. There's the var, which stands for variable. And uh, so this var, uh, we can assign any name to it, okay? So it's the, it's the variable name. And what we're gonna say is this is gonna be ball x. All right, it's classic camel case. And we're gonna set this ball x to, uh, so it's gonna be halfway down the screen, okay? So halfway down the screen is gonna be uh, so it's 1200 so we could do canvas dot uh, uh, length or is it uh, canvas dot width canvas dot width divided by two okay and then var ball y is equal to canvas dot height divided by two all right okay and so it's going to start at 600 and 300 and that seems good to me um, and then what we also want is um, this uh, var called uh, ball x delta and so this is going to be the change in x and uh, this is going to be equal to and this is our our ball speed basically so we're going to say equal to three here um, and then what we're gonna say is, we're gonna copy that. And we're gonna say ball delta, uh, ball y delta. Now these could potentially change. And in our game they won't, but I want you to have the option of, of, of changing that, uh, modifying that, uh, to, to, you know, to make your own game uh, even better than the game that we create. Uh, which is a, a real uh, key uh, way of improving yourself as a programmer is to actually take what you have learned from a, a tutorial, be it your teacher or a video tutorial, and extend upon that with the principles that you have learned. Okay, and so you're going to learn quite a bit throughout this uh, throughout this tutorial series. And uh, what you want to do is you want to take those uh, concepts and. Uh, apply them in new ways within the program. Uh, don't settle for what we create as a group. Uh, you know, extend that, and then and then you're going to get the most out of these lessons. Okay, and so uh, we have var radius. I'm going to set my radius to ten. Actually, I'm going to set it to twenty, uh, and I might want to use the equal sign. Okay. Now, I did say that there are two um, different uh, ways, or there actually are several different ways, uh, but the, the two that um, I would most likely use 
without even knowing that I'm uh, switching between the two would be the let, okay? So let is a way of creating a, a variable. Um, and there's not a whole lot of difference between var and let. The main difference is scope. And so scope is something you may not have uh, heard about before. But in JavaScript, var has global scope, okay? So any method within uh, my program uh, could use a var, including uh, if it's in a, a method by itself. So it's not, it's not defined, it's, it's not, uh, you know, uh, confined to just that variable or that, that uh, function that it's in, it still has global scope. And now what let does, if we said let radius equals two, and we uh, created this variable within say a for loop, the scope of that let, that let variable would be only that for loop and it could not be accessed anywhere else. And so if you're using like a, a newer version of JavaScript, okay, so maybe ES5 uh, or 6 or whatever, uh, you would probably want to get in the habit of using let. Um, but for, for the sake of this series, we're just going to use var and know that they are pretty much interchangeable. And uh, that's that, okay? So, um, so that's one thing about a var. The other thing about a var is that this is not a strongly typed language. And what a strongly typed language means is that we have a variable of a certain type and that variable can only hold that type. Okay, so if, for instance, if we are in Java, a Java variable might look like uh, int int num is equal to three, okay? And the type of this variable is an int. Uh, but if we're looking at JavaScript, and we said var num is equal to three. Now, the, the thing here is, if we want to reassign num, this integer num, to say five, we could do that because it's the same type. But if we wanted to define this num as instead of three, we wanted to say three, which is a string, uh, Java would give us all kinds of errors, okay? Um, it would actually only give us one error, but uh, it would say that this is not allowed, okay? But in JavaScript, a variable can be of any type, okay? So at one instance, we could have num equaling three, the number, and then at another instance, we could say three, all right? Uh, so that is a huge difference between Java and JavaScript, and that's why you're seeing that uh, pretty much all of our variables are just gonna say var, all right? There's, there's not gonna be any uh, differentiation between different variable types, it's all gonna be var. Okay, so uh, enough of that little side note. Uh, let's get to our let's get to our um, our ball. Okay, so we we want to create this ball. It's going to be right here in the middle of the screen. And so what we said uh, last time was we had this idea of an arc, correct? And so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, steal it from our previous code. Uh, the uh, one of the hallmarks of a programmer is, uh, is uh, you know, uh, saving uh, keystrokes, all right? Uh, so if you're a good programmer, you're gonna be a lazy programmer. A lazy programmer wants to do things with the most brevity uh, possible so that they don't have to do as much, all right? And so here, uh, we, we know that uh, our ball X is gonna be right here. Okay, so instead of a hard-coded value right here, we're using this number, or this variable. And this is gonna be our ball Y. And here, this is gonna be the radius. And so here, we're gonna say radius. That's our start point. 
this is our endpoint, and we know that it, we don't want a semicircle, so we're going to say 2 times math.pi. And so this would be 1 radian math.pi, and then this would be 2 radians, and that, that would be a complete uh, revolution around that circle. All right, and so if we were to run this, let's go ahead and uh, see what that looks like. And we see our circle, okay? Um, and it is exactly what we thought it would be. We didn't change the fill style, so the fill style automatically uh, defaults to black. And so when we filled it, um, it was black. Now, here's something that uh, we probably uh, should take a little bit more time on. Uh, but, you know, we're just going to leave it as, you know, I'm not going to like spend too much time on it. It's this idea of functions and we'll explain it uh, more and more as we go through these videos. So a function is a, um, basically it's um, code that is confined to um, a particular, you know, we can call it with a particular function name. And uh, every time we call it, it runs that particular code. All right, and so we want to use functions as much as possible in our code uh, because a it makes it easier to uh, find errors within our code, and then b uh, we can do things like call that code over and over again uh, without having to type it all the time, and we can use functions like set interval that allows Java to run that code over and over again as if in a while loop, um, and uh, you know, there, there are some cool features with that, which we're going to find out. And so when we're game programming, the one of the, uh, the, the things that every game is going to have is going to be a loop. OK, it's going to be it's going to be the game loop, in fact. And so here uh, there are different ways we could name this function. So we're going to say function and uh, we're going to say game loop. OK. And so everything that we want to appear in our game is going to be in this game loop, all right? And so I want to draw this ball. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut it from up here, just take it and uh, cut it and paste it right here. So all my code is right here for that ball. So every time game loop runs, and for now it's only going to run once because we're going to call it right here. So it's going to run once and it's going to draw this ball. So let's see if that actually, if that works. So it should appear exactly as it did before. And it does. Okay, so adding that function uh, actually did nothing. Uh, it had no adverse actions on, on our game. Now, that's great, but it doesn't get us any closer to what we want to do, which is like animations and stuff like that. And so what we really want to do here is instead of uh, just specifying that we want to run this game loop once, what we want to do is run this game loop a certain amount of time. So what we're going to do is say we're going to say set interval. And here, what we're going to do to call this is we're going to give it, we're going to give it the uh, name of the uh, loop, or I'm sorry, give it the name of the function that we want it to loop over and over again, which is our game loop. And we want to give it a time, okay? And so uh, 10 is the fastest that it will run. So this will try to run it um, as fast as possible. And we're going to talk about what set interval does a little bit later when we want to slow down some animations. But now we want it, or to set a standard um, refresh rate or um, uh, uh, frame rate for our game, sorry. So if we want to set a particular frame rate for our game, um, for instance, 60 frames a second, uh, then this is uh, something that we would change to do that. And we would make it so that it only runs at 60 frames per second. Okay. And so we'll, we'll look at that later. Um, but for now, we're going to do this, all right? And so let's see what happens, all right? So Control-S, Control-Shift-A, which I set up. And look, it's doing exactly what we want it to do. It's drawing it, <laughs> all right? So, uh, I mean, that, that's what we wanted it to do. But uh, we wanted to do a little bit more, okay? So what I want to do is 
I want to add a whole lot more code to this game loop. Now, if we keep on adding code to this game loop, it's going to get really messy. So, if we can identify chunks of code that are complete in itself, we can set those off into their own functions. Okay? And so, what we could do is that we're going to do a function called draw ball. All right? And we're going to take all this code that draws a ball and we're going to place it right into that function. And so, and when we want to draw a ball over here, we just call that function. So we say draw ball, draw ball. And now, every time we call game loop, it's going to call this function. And it's going to look inside this function to see what is, uh, you know, what it needs to do. Okay? And then it's going to get to the end of this loop, and it's going to go back uh, to the start of the loop, and go to the end, start. And so it's going to be, uh, it's going to continually call itself through this set interval function and do whatever is in here. Now, right now, this is not interesting. It's just drawing that same ball. But what if we did this? So we know that ball x controls the position of the ball. What if we said ball x is equal to ball x plus one. Okay, now I'm going to save that and run it. Isn't that awesome? Okay, and so it runs off the screen. I, I think for y'all it actually does run off the screen. Let me just double check. Well, I can't double check it right now. Uh, but uh, so you're getting somewhere. Uh, maybe it shows you the whole screen of the video. Um, I haven't looked at it. Um, I don't remember if it does or it doesn't. Um, but uh, it goes off the screen. So, but you see that there's this weird smear to it, almost as if the ball that it drew previously stays there and it keeps on drawing a new ball every time over the previous ball, but just shifting slightly over. And in fact, that's exactly what's happening. And so we don't want that to happen. Okay. So there's a f function in our game loop that we need to call, okay? And this is going to be ctx.clearRect, and we're going to clear a rectangle. And we're going to start our rectangle at 0, 0, and we are going to go 1,200 wide and 600 tall, okay? And we're going to save that and do Control-Shift-A, and now our ball is actually moving you know, on its own, without leaving a trail behind, which is pretty cool. Okay, now, that's pretty cool. Can we do the same thing for ball Y? So let's do that. We're gonna say ball Y, ball Y, and I'm gonna save this and run it. And it's doing exactly what we had expected to do, okay? It is moving in the positive y direction and the positive x direction. And it's moving uh, in a linear fashion, one, one uh, to one linear fashion, okay? So it's going at a 45 degree angle. So is that all we want to do here? Well, no. Okay, so I'm going to define another function. And I'm going to call this collision. And so in my collision function, I'm going to test something. Okay, so we're going to look at uh, this, uh, this canvas again. And so we know over here, the x value of this side of the canvas, the x value is going to be zero. The x value of this side of the canvas, all the way to the right, is going to be 1200. The y value of the top of the canvas is going to be what? Zero. Okay, that's where the y starts. It starts in this top left hand corner. And then the y value down here is going to be 600. We could use a conditional statement that says, hey, we want our ball to stay in the area where we can see it. So, we want to say, if our ball hits this edge, let's make it bounce right back, okay? So, let's do that. 
So our conditional statement starts with an if, and in the parentheses, we're gonna say, well, what do we want? We're gonna say if ball x is greater than, actually ball x plus our radius um, is equal to, or I'm sorry, is uh, greater than 1200, we're going to say, um, so one thing that I didn't do is we're calling ball x plus one, but what we should be calling is ball x delta. Okay, so uh, instead of doing ball x plus this, what we're gonna say is ball x plus ball x delta. And then we're gonna do, this, do the same thing for ball x, uh, ball y and ball y delta. And what that's gonna do is, uh, first of all, it's gonna speed it up. It started out as one and now it's gonna be three. Oops. Um, and so let's see, let's see, actually, yeah, let's see it sped up. So now it's going a whole lot faster. That's great. And what we wanna do is if ball X plus radius is greater than 1200, we're gonna say ball X delta is equal to negative one times ball X delta. And so what we're doing is basically making this a negative value. So if ball x delta was positive because it's going in a positive direction, uh, if we change ball x delta to go into a negative direction, it's gonna turn around when it hits that spot, okay? And so we want to do the same thing here. Uh, we want an or statement. So or is the two pipes. These are the, the uh, if you hit control and the button above enter, you're gonna get these two uh, horizontal lines, okay? And so that's the or symbol. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, um, or ball x minus radius is less than zero, uh, then, then that's gonna happen, okay? So if this is true or this is true, then we want to do this. All right, and then we're gonna do the same thing for our ball y. So if ball y plus radius is greater than 600, or ball y minus radius is less than zero, then we're gonna say ball y delta equal to negative one uh, times ball y delta. Now you may be thinking, there must be, you may not be thinking this, but uh, this is a lot to write out for something as easy as multiplying it by a negative one. And what you could do here is you could just simply do this. You could say ball x delta times equals negative one. And what this is going to do is it's going to take ball x delta, multiply it by negative one, and then set the value of ball x delta. Uh, it's going to set the value as the result, result to ball x delta. So this and this are equivalent statements. All right. And so you could do the same thing here. And if you want to shorten your code, you could certainly do it like that. In the future, you may, me, you, you may see me do this a lot. In fact, you can do it with all the operations. If we wanted to say ball x delta is equal to ball x delta plus one, we could just do a plus equals. Or if we want to say minus one, we could say minus equals. Or if we want to say divide by two, uh, we could say divide equals. Okay, so you could use all those different things and to shorten the operation and you don't have to actually, you know, say ball x delta is equal to ball x delta plus one or whatever. Okay, so let's see what this does to us. Okay, so uh, control S to save and we're control shift A. Hmm, 
Well, this is going to teach us a lesson. So, it's obviously not doing what we expected it to do. And there's a reason for this. Is it our if statements? No, our if statements look great. They look exactly how we probably want them to look. Uh, we have this function called collision. We have this function called draw ball. And we have this function called game loop. Now, we know, as, because I've said it, if it does not appear in the game loop, it doesn't happen. Okay? So we have this function collision, but it's not appearing in the game loop. So it doesn't happen. We create it, uh, but for all intents and purposes, uh, we could probably just not have created it if that's what we're going to do with our code. So we want to actually call this here. And when we call it here, then it happens. Or if we call it somewhere else within our our code that is called here. So if we called it in draw ball, it will still happen because draw ball is called here. So it'd go up here to draw ball and then it would see, uh, well, it would see collision if we put collision here and it would still do collision. But that's, that's messy. We want uh, to do them in order that we expect them to run, okay? So I'm gonna draw my ball and I'm gonna check collisions and so forth and so on. And so I'm gonna save this and I'm gonna run it. And wow, don't you think that's awesome? You have created your first JavaScript animation. Um, and so that's great. Now, at this point, we, I wanna do a little checkpoint, okay? And uh, what we wanna do here, this is gonna be our first assignment. We need to have assignments throughout this video tutorial. And uh, what we're going to do is draw ball happens every time it gets called. All right. Now, every time it calls, it gets called a game loop. Now, right now, we don't have a fill style. So what I'm going to do is right above fill, I'm going to do ctx dot fill style. And I'm going to set it equal to purple. All right. And then I'm going to save that and we're going to run it. Okay, CTHS, it is purple and gold. Don't y'all love that? Um, so, uh, so here we have uh, our, our purple ball. And what we wanna do now is, what I want you to do now is I want you to change the color in the game. So what I want you to do is change the color right here. Okay, so how might we do that? Okay, so here we do a fill style equals purple. And so every time it hits this ball, I want it to change. Okay, now we could do a conditional statement right here. We could say if ball x delta is equal to what? It's equal to uh, I'm sorry, we'll say less than zero because if it's negative, you know, it's less than zero. So if it's negative, we want to do something there. And then else, so else would be whatever else that there is, and that would be positive or zero. Uh, we want to do something else. So here we're going to say do something. Here, we're going to say, do something, okay? And so, what are you going to do? Well, you probably want to change the color, all right? And so, I, I've set it up for you in a, a very good way. And here, you could, you could change the outline as well. And so, that's exactly what I want you to do for this first assignment. And uh, this is run 30 minutes, so probably... Uh, the whole period for um, some people. Uh, I know when I teach this in my class, um, even this one this one uh, lesson could take, even though it is 30 minutes of me um, talking and coding with y'all, when students start to have errors and stuff like that, and I have to go around the room and uh, you know troubleshoot some things, <clears throat> we uh, 
we end up spending like uh, you know 45 minutes or an hour on uh, this one thing and th that's why that this video series um, it may be short but we're we're allotting about two or three weeks for it depending okay and so here um, we have uh, set it up so you're going to change the fill style do something to fill style and then here down here you're going to do something to the stroke style so here we're going to say change the stroke style all right okay so um and, and that's something that we should be able to check pretty easily. You're gonna submit your code, your working code uh, to Canvas. Um, and uh, then you are going to, um, you know, pick up with the next lesson. Uh, if, if you're not doing this through EMH or EMS ISD, uh, then, you know, it's still beneficial to do uh, these these little side projects, even though I might I may not uh, talk about them uh, going forward. They're just extra stuff that uh, may look cool or whatever. Uh, I think they are beneficial in cementing your knowledge of what's really happening. OK, and what you can do with the language. So when you start to create your own games, um, you know, you'll have a pretty solid um, idea. And so I, I think that's where we're at. Um, we're going to end this video here. But when we pick up, we're going to look at picking up with the paddle, okay? And how we get movement from the paddle and stuff like that. So um, that will be it.